Hey guys, welcome to Motorsport Report. I'm Julia PK. You already know Charles Bradley, our Motorsport.com editor in chief, and quite the regular on our show nowadays, Charles. Indeed, I like to think so. You should co host the whole thing with <laughs> okay, me. Okay, no worries. <laughs> Right, Charles, big weekend ahead of us in racing. Uh, starting Thursday, we have the NASCAR Daytona Duels, the twin qualifying races that will determine the starting grid for this Sunday's Daytona 500. Minus, of course, William Byron and his teammate Alex Bowman, who are already locked into the front row for that race. Uh, then Saturday, we have the Mexico City e -Prix, round four of the FIA Formula E Championship. And Sunday, of course, the great American race, the Daytona 500. Charles, let's start with Formula E. Um, a couple of things to look forward to this weekend, including Geox Dragon welcoming a new driver in Felipe Nasser. It'll be his first time driving a Formula E car and already thrust into a race. How do you think he'll do? Yeah, it's going to be tough for him thrown in at the deep end like this. Uh, but Felipe, super talented guy. I know him really well from our GP2 days when I was reporting on that for Autosport. Um, as we saw, he's still as good as ever, as, as good as he was in F1. We never really got the chance to show his ability quite in decent machinery, I'd say. Uh, but we saw again at the Rolex 24, what a great driver he is going wheel to wheel with Fernando Alonso. And uh, yeah, I think it'll take him a little bit of time to adapt to these cars, just because it's quite a specialized way of driving, getting used to the regen and everything that's uh, to do with that. But I think we'll see him get better and better as the season goes on. I think it's a good choice. Yeah, absolutely. And well, as you've said last time in Formula E, expect the unexpected. Who have you got winning this weekend's Mexico City e -Prix? Yeah, I was like going up and down the grid going, he could win, he could win, he could win, he could win. He could win. And it's amazing uh, title battle you've got at the front between Samber, Jerome D'Ambrosio, then it seems like everyone's racing for second at the yeah. moment. Well, and we've had three different winners in three different uh, rounds, and we've had, I think, five or five different drivers, or seven different drivers from five different teams taking to the podium. So it's... It's really a gamble either way you spin it. So yeah, we'll exactly. Be gone. So I'm going to go for Lucas de Grassi this weekend. I think Audi showed how strong they were in Mexico last year. Obviously, Lucas was on the pole last race, got thrown to the back. Huh. Mexico, last year, he got thrown to the back again because he had to change the inverter on the car. So I think he's due a bit of good luck. And I think because he's 13th in the championship at the moment, I think that's going to help him in the qualifying sessions because he'll run in a later group. Uh, and that should help propel him up the grid. And uh, yeah, he's going to be my pick for the weekend. Who you got? Uh, I've got Mahindra. Okay. I think that they've been looking very strong this season. They've had a driver in every podium so far this round. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been pretty consistent. They, they had the pole last year in Mexico with Felix Rosenqvist. Yep. Uh, ultimately, he didn't have the best race. I think he had some energy management issues. Uh, and Nick Heidfeld also had uh, a problem on track. But we know they have a fast car on the Mexico track. I'm going to go with Pascal Berlein. Mm -hmm. He got second place in Santiago. I think he's hungry for it. If he can get a good lap in in qualifying and, you know, qualify towards the front, get away from the mess in the back, I think he has a great shot as winning at, at winning his first Formula E race this weekend. Okay, good, cool. Let's yeah. see. Let's see. Then moving on to the Daytona 500. Right. I think it is going to be very interesting to see the performance of the drivers who move teams this season. I'm thinking... Martin Truex Jr., who's now in with Joe Gibbs Racing, replacing Daniel Suarez, who's now at Stuart Haas Racing in the number 41, uh, replacing Kurt Busch, who's moved on to Chip Ganassi Racing. So a lot of drivers moving around. It's going to be very interesting to see those dynamics. Yeah, great talents there. Uh, thing I'm looking out for, obviously, we've had qualifying already, so we know the front row. As you said earlier, we've got William Byron and Alex Bowman right up there in the Hendrick cars. I think they're going to be strong. I think, I think uh, Byron now with uh, Chad Knaus, Jimmy Johnson's old crew chief. I think he's got a great opportunity this season. Uh, starting from the pole, can't start from any higher up than that. And uh, the Hendrick cars certainly have a lot of horsepower under the hood. I think ultimately it's going to be a survival race. I mean, it, it always is with the Daytona 500. And we saw it in the clash. I mean, yep. you can be the fastest driver in practice. You can be on pole. But if you get caught up in a big one, you just, you're done. Yeah, I was a little bit worried by that style of racing we saw at the weekend because they've gone for a smaller spoiler this year. It seemed like everyone wanted to jump into that top lane as soon as possible. And although in previous years we've seen big wrecks happen because they're running in a tight pack, now it's a different game. So they seem to be running in a single file, but when they do get a run, 
this very aggressive side draft seems to be the only way you can pass. And you saw with Jimmy Johnson and Paul Menard just how horribly wrong that can go. And if it happens at the front of the pack, it's going to take out everybody behind you. So I'm not sure I'm really a fan of that style of racing, but we'll, we'll see. Sometimes the clash doesn't really reflect uh, as much on the 500 as it normally does. I think we normally get a little bit more of a better uh, call in the dual races, which will be very interesting to watch. But yeah, if they, if they end up running just single file and then having to pull down and get really close, they're going to block, they're going to cause a crash and then all hell lets loose. Yeah. You were there for the clash though. I, I was, Getting all, I was. The, all the secret, <laughs> secret uh, inside stories for your pick. Well, let me tell you, here's my pick. Uh, I would love to see someone win who hasn't won before, and even more so someone who hasn't won a cup race yet. But I'm gonna go with Eric Almirola. Ooh. Uh, he knows what it takes to lead that race. Mm -hmm. He led it last year up until the last lap. Yep. Uh, he's won on a super speedway before. He's won at Talladega. And I think the Ford Mustangs are looking very, very fast this year. Hopefully he gets a good starting position out of Thursday's race. Mm -hmm. And if he can keep himself out of trouble, I figure he has a shot at winning it. I think he's going to be looking out for Austin Dillon. And he's going to fence him as soon as he gets anywhere near him after what <laughs> happened last year. Uh, my pick, uh, I've gone for I think I'm going out on a limb here because it's the first race for the Ford Mustang in, uh, in the Cup Series. Obviously, we saw in the clash, uh, Paul Menard looked very strong with the, uh, with the Wood Brothers car, but I'm going to go for a Penske. I'm going to go for Ryan Blaney. Okay. Uh, I think he drove brilliantly last year. He was very unlucky uh, to get taken out when he'd, he'd led so many laps. Uh, I think he's a young driver who's just ready for that massive breakthrough and I think he could, his career could go absolutely stratospheric if he can win this race. It's the one they all want to win, you know, everyone wants to have that name on the uh, Harvey JL trophy, which is massive by the way. Have you ever seen it? No, I haven't. Oh, I've, I've, I've touched it oh, and really? I got told off for it because <laughs> you're not supposed to. And it's like, it's huge, it's absolutely huge. You're never going to lift it. They only take the top part off to lift it above their heads. There's this like huge plinth underneath. Do they get to keep a copy of the Yeah, original? I think they, yeah. They, they get a, a replica of, the, oh, of gotcha. the top bit, but it's a, it's a really cool trophy. So everybody's out to win that race. Well, Las Vegas has Joey Logano, Kevin Harvick, and Brad Kozlowski as co-favorites to win the race. Okay, so two Penske drivers so there. They're, Penske miss, they're, drivers missing there. The, they're missing the star quality, I think, <laughs> the Blaney. Well, Charles, it's going to be a great weekend. We appreciate you joining us as always. That's it for today's episode of Motorsport Report, our previews and predictions for the weekend's races. I'm Julia PK, and see you next time.